All right, we're back. Uh, this is a bit of an experiment, my setup here. I am on a tripod. I want to try to look through, see what I'm doing, and get some close-up views of what I'm working on. So I've placed the resistor networks in, and each network has... Let's see if we can zoom in. Zooming in is better because I think I can actually get this thing to focus when I'm zooming in instead of moving the camera. Each network is the one you see in front of you, has the number, and at the left you will see a dot right there. And they all have the dot. And they all have a number one at pin one, and that's where the dot goes. I don't think it would make any difference if you flipped this around because these are not integrated circuits, they are just resistor networks. And I looked at the data sheet and just as I suspected, every two pins you have a resistor between the two pins, all the, going from left to right. And that's all it is. And if you turn it around you're still going to have the same resistors, just then they're all the same value. So I don't know that it matters. But it looks neater because the numbers all match etc. Um, so what I've done is I've stuck these in the holes, I've double checked my part list, made sure I absolutely certain that I had the right ones in the right holes, and then the instructions tell you to bend one pin, which I did, one pin on each end to hold the network in place, and they are in. Right, see if I if I move this, I will not be focused anymore. That's the problem. So the pins, um, I you, you put them through and you bend a pin on either end to hold it in place. Flipped, I flipped the board over and I soldered one pin on each one to hold it. Now I'll go down and I'm going to solder all the pins. I'll leave the outside pins for last and I'll actually straighten them before I solder them. And it says there's no need to trim them and they're not that long. This board must be clear of any metal uh, behind it where the pins would actually short against something because uh, it says right in the instruction manual that it's okay to not uh, trim them. So I apologize, I mean I'm, I'm trying this as kind of an experiment, but I know I can tell already on the camera there's a lot of glare coming off the board, and I don't think I can fix that, because I have to be able to see what I'm soldering, and at the same time, well maybe, try to get it on camera to some extent, try, that's not bad. That's not bad there. I'm learning as I go along with you. I am not an experienced cameraman. So I'm just going to go down the row and, and solder all these pins. They, um, they're fairly straightforward. Now, if you're a radio restorer and you work on a lot of these tube gears and you've never built a kit, never worked with a PCB uh, board, for these little pins, and really any pins, how you want to solder is you want to get the tip in contact with both the pin of the component you're soldering and the pad and what you do and you're heating them you're heating the pen you're heating the pad and then you touch the solder to the pin mainly really to literally, literally to the other side you ha I have the soldering tip on one side and I'm applying the solder to the other side so what's happening is the heat transfers from the soldering iron to the pad and the pen. See, and I screwed that one up. 
I got it on the tip. You don't want to put it on the tip of the soldering iron. You're not putting it on the iron. You're putting it on the part. That is one of the tricks that I had to learn before I could figure out how to solder well. I remember doing kits in day school, day camp, not day school. When I was a kid we used to go to day camp at the YMCA and they would have electronic kits, simple simple kits like, I don't even remember what they were. I think one of them was a, an electric eye that would turn a light on and off if you walked past it. And I don't remember them giving a lot of instruction on soldering. And I remember not soldering very well and never getting the solder to melt properly. And, you know, looking back on it now, I, I'm sure they never taught us how to properly hold your iron between the tip, your tip on the part in the pad. You know, you, with no experience, I think most people think, yeah, you, you stick the solder on the tip and then it melts onto it. No. You heat up the part. That's what the tip's job is. It's to heat the part up. So that the part itself and the pad itself actually melts the solder. Then you know you have good adhesion. And the solder is flow, flowing, flowed, has flowed. Is that a word? Through the pin, down through the, down through the hole, and also, um, might be off screen there. I don't think you can see this that well anyway, even though I'm, uh, I'm zoomed in. I don't know how well this shows up. So the heat heats up the pin. The solder flows through the hole to the other side of the board, both sides of the board. It adheres to the pin, it adheres to the pad, and the pad is pre-soldered. That's what's actually on these pads, is a little bit of solder. So that it, solder sticks very well to itself and flows onto itself very easily. So, you want good flow. It's capillary action, basically sucks it through to the other side. Okay, now we're going to inspect. I probably have them heavy. You know, it even says in the instructions there's no need to even have the solder above the surface of the board. If you just fill the hole, that's all you need. Um, I'm definitely heavy. Part of my problem is, uh, I mentioned this already, my eyesight's not what it used to be. And I... Uh, I really want to get, and I really need to get, and I used to have one, one of those big light up magnifying glass that I can look through while I'm actually soldering. Because when I'm, my head's back where it is when I'm soldering and I'm not up to the I, I can't see it that well. You know, I mean, I can see it, but I tend to put too much solder in, I think, because I'm not, I can't tell how much is going on. That one looks okay. So there you have it. I, I don't know, boy, I, I've said it before. Do I want to keep the camera rolling? Just doing these pins. <laughs> not a lot of excitement here. No testing, no electronics, nothing's hooked up. That'll all come later. I think as I go on with these videos uh, in the build here, I, I want to capture the build on video for my own posterity, as I said, just to get it on video. But I don't think it's helpful to show every single thing I do. Um, for instance, I could have just shown the beginning of this video of popping these in, 
bending the pins, talked a little bit about soldering them. Soldered one or two and then ended the video and then just finished these all off camera. Because I'm doing the same thing over and over. There's nothing new to see. And in fact, as I'm sitting here saying this, and I realize I have a lot of these things to solder at the moment, um, I think I'm going to finish this one and end the video and do them all off camera. When I get to the next step, I will show that. I think that's what I'm, I'm going to end up doing that um, as I go through the series here. Make it more manageable, more realistic. Um, I think that would be a better, better approach. One thing you got to watch too is for solder bridges, and like I said, I know I'm putting too much solder on these, mainly because of my eyesight. And I'm kind of rushing a little maybe too, because I'm on camera, I don't know. I think I am, you know, I, I'm like self-conscious about the fact that this is taking a long time and people may want to watch it, and I think I'm rushing faster than I would normally. They look good. don't know how much magnification actually goes through this screen, but... You can see how high those divots are. I mean, they're fine. I'm, I'm, what I'm looking for is solder bridges. You want to make sure all those pads, and the, as the capillary action of the pads will keep the solder on the pad, but if you get too much on there, you can get a bridge from one pad to the next. And that's really what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a nice shiny surface, full coverage, which I have more than full coverage, and, um, no solder bridges. Yeah, and yeah, there, I'm using too much. A couple of these, you can see a blob that came through. You can see that shiny spot. That's too much solder that flowed all the way through. I mean, you want it to flow to the other side of the board. It's a double sided board, but it doesn't need to flow out the other side and drip. So. Okay, that's two of them. I have one, two, three, four, five more to solder. I'm not going to bore you to death just soldering pins that are all the same. Uh, that'll be the end of this video. And the next step, uh, we'll start together and then I'll see how it goes and how much I want to tape of it and, you know, make a decision. Thanks for watching. This is Tom. 73.